Well, hi everybody, this is Dan Lamassal, and it is Friday lunchtime, so it's our skills broadcast. And for those of you who might be new, just so that you know, we do three broadcasts a, a week. Uh, one at this time, which is lunchtime, Pacific time, which is where we learn something. We do one Friday evening at 7.30, which we call our <laughs> smile time. <laughs> and because, you know, we love to laugh. And then we do another one on Sunday afternoon, which is really low key. And that is called our Soul Sunday broadcast. So welcome to all of you and feel free to join in on any of the completely different, if you like, in, in some ways, um, broadcasts. But they all have a common theme. theme. Hi there, Jody. Those of us who are part of Dear Mama Sala, people who care about one another, we're like an extended family and we go through life together. And it's lovely not to be alone. And it is also great to know that if you need some support, you've got a group of people that are prepared to give it. And I think that's really important. To, for people to realize to get support, you need to reach out. You need to tell people you need some support. And then it's amazing what you will get. I think one of the big lessons I had to learn was uh, to ask for help. It's not easy, right? And it took me a long time to find out that asking for help was a sign of strength, not one of weakness, as you're going to hear a bit later on in the broadcast. Now, today, what we're going to be doing is learning how to make these. Yum, 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 yum. Um, and why, you might ask, why did I want to show you how to make these? I, <laughs> I needed to find a healthier swap for this. This is my very favorite a chocolate covered ice cream bar that I've eaten for years in the summer, but I needed something healthier. Now, I don't know if you can see, but this one is a yogurt and berry popsicle, and I've dipped it in white chocolate. And I want to tell you, it was so tasty that I can do without the chocolate. Uh, you know, I did it with chocolate just to show you. I'm going to put these back in the freezer so I don't waste them. Okay, so let's do it. It's really, really easy. And by the way, why is that, was that important? Um, literally, and Jody, by the way, for those, hi, Isabel. Um, yeah, they do look nice, don't they, <laughs> Isabel? I want to tell you, they taste even better. Um, I want to thank Jody, our admin, for many, many things, obviously, but uh, particularly for the research she did for me. Um, I said to her that these things that I eat are 150 calories each, and the carbs are 17 grams, of which 12 were sugar. I'm going to be talking the statistics a bit later. So what do you need to make them? Uh, I really recommend a silicone mold. And I just happen to have heart-shaped ones for this. Works really well. Um, but <laughs> word of warning, if you're going to use a silicone mold, have something steady underneath it because once they're filled, you've got to get them to the freezer. And from experience, <laughs> unless you like popsicle-covered floors, um, it's a really good idea to have something solid underneath so you can go to the freezer easily. <laughs> The other thing is, um, have some popsicle sticks. And quite honestly, you're probably not surprised to hear, I don't throw my popsicle sticks away. You know, when I finished eating one of these things, um, I don't throw the stick away. Now, <laughs> those of you who know me well know that I don't throw anything away very well. Hi there, Sandy. And so the reason uh, is that I am an artist, so I use them as stir sticks. Um, I am a gardener, so I use them to you know, <laughs> mark seedlings and things. So don't ever throw your popsicle sticks away. And make sure if you've got children or grandchildren, uh, make sure they don't either. You'll be amazed how useful they can be. Uh, so all I do is <laughs> I just throw them in the dishwasher and clean them up, and then they're ready to go again. You're going to need um, some sort of blender. Uh, and I've done mine all in my magic bullet thing. 
So just so you know, you don't need anything very powerful or, or well, actually the magic bullet's pretty powerful, but that's it. You're going to need some fruit. Now, the interesting thing is I have been making these popsicles out of what I call fruit that's just about to go mushy on me. All right, the, these grapes, uh, I'm getting new grapes in tomorrow, so guess what? I need to use up some grapes. Rather than waste them, rather than watch this go really mushy, what I'm doing is I'm freezing them. Hang on a second, let me show you this. I, I, I'm going like this because I'm going to pick something up. Um, I'm freezing them and also making uh, just little pucks of fruit so that I can throw these into a smoothie or a sl make a slushy or whatever. Get it? So if you don't put the popsicle stick in, stick in you've got a very useful thing to make to add to. <laughs> I nearly went to the floor. Um, go to the <laughs> in for smoothies or slushies or whatever else you want, right? So, and the good news is they're not going to last long because they really are good. <laughs> so they're not going to take up a whole lot of space. The, the, the other thing you're going to need is some lemon juice. Now, lemon juice for two reasons. Number one, it adds a tang that really makes these popsicles, you know, you go, oh, that is so good. Um, you don't need a lot. You know, literally a squidge, that well-known culinary term, the squidge, is a squidge <laughs> in my world, because you know I don't measure. All right, so I think we have all the bits Oh, and also the other reason for lemon, obviously, if you're dealing with apples or bananas or any of those fruits that are inclined to turn ugly um, when you have done them, uh, when you've mushed them up, uh, you know, lemon juice will help them keep their color, obviously. Now, I haven't got any here that are what I call um, fruit and veg. Uh, but that will be another experiment that I will try, and I'll report back to you how that works. You know, can I add avocado, for example? But I've got a feeling that might not be too much fun. Uh, the other thing we need, this, I, I mixed mine with yogurt. And I buy my yogurt in a bag. I'm just mushing it up so that it's mixed up. And that's it. That's all we need. Oh, this fruit has already been mushed up. Oh, interesting. Jody's saying avocado ice cream is delicious. Okay, Jody, then it's worth a try. I just don't think I'd like the color. But if I put it in with this, uh, this would, this is a blend of um, berries. If I put it in with the berry blend, then I don't think I would notice it. All right, so let's have some fun. I'm going to change the angle of the... Okay, so we can do everything right here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load up the fruit. First thing we're going to do is wash our hands again, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, having washed our hands, um, then the next thing we're going to do is load up the fruit. So I'm going to do, yeah, this banana is just, you know, past its prime. Still got all the nutrients in it, everything we want. Okay. And so I'm going to put a little bit of yogurt in there just to start it off, and then I'll add more grapes. Yep. Now, the yogurt I found helps uh, keep it so that it doesn't. 
you know, if you use water, you're going to get solid ice. When you use something like, um, <laughs> that's not what I want. Uh, when you use something like yogurt with it, it helps to keep it softer. Now, it doesn't mean that it's soft. As you saw, those uh, pucks were solid. All right, going to make a big noise, people. Or not. got the blend of banana. Uh, hang on a second, I can see things. So do you freeze your bananas with skin or without? I don't freeze my bananas, quite honestly. But if I do freeze them, I would freeze them uh, with the skins on. Okay, here we go. So now all I'm going to do is to pour some of this mixture into the bottom of this. Really difficult stuff here. Yeah. Rocket sounds. Okay. And now I'm going to throw in the rest of the grapes. I'm going to throw in more yogurt. That all over my countertop. And I'm going to throw in some berries. Why not? I just like them when they're too colored for some reason. I think this is crushed blueberries in here, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh, tastes like blueberries and strawberries. Now, what I did forget to do, and that's why we do live broadcast is to put in the lemon. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is just put a couple of drops of lemon into each of those, a little squidge in there. And I'm going to mix that lemon in with the banana because that's the bit we don't want to change color. Good, we can leave that in. We can put our sticks in there. All right, and I'm not reading the comments as I'm doing all this stuff, guys, so just bear with me. I'll read them in a second. And then I'm going to. Probably make a big mess anyway, but let's try it this way. So difficult, huh? Yeah. 
I'm just going to move the fruit mixture, the, the, the berry mixture to, to the edges. And portion it out a bit better. All right, now, as you can see, it was hardly what you call difficult. And I seem to remember that I froze them for about four to six hours. Now, with your permission, I am going to go put them in the freezer <laughs> before I totally mess them. So just bear with me a second. And as you can see, it's easy for me to move them because Now let me put the things that need to go back in the fridge and the fridge and then we can talk. <laughs> I've got <laughs> I've got stuff all over my countertop now. <laughs> Jody's saying, Do I have room in my new freezer? <laughs> um so I must admit, Jody, <laughs> as you can imagine, it's getting less every day. But the good news is that I now have room in this freezer. Um, you know, I got so fed up with opening up this freezer and not being able to see what was in there. And so what I've given myself is a little bit of space to be able to do things. All right, so... I think you'll agree that that was pretty easy to do. Any questions? Um, Sandy, I've got to ask you, is there a benefit or did not uh, to freezing with the skin on a banana or off? Let's make sure that everybody knows your input. Yeah. Jody, you know, what I'm doing is every week, I, you know, every you know, couple of days, I'm pulling more stuff out of this freezer just so I can start seeing what's really in there and then working out how I'm going to use it. Oh, excuse me. So that's a good one to know. Now, so anybody got any questions about these popsicles? Oh, um, do you want to know how I covered them in chocolate? <laughs> that was the fun bit. <laughs> uh, really quite easy. Hang on a second. Um, I recommend that you buy chocolate. Uh, you can buy chocolate like this in a slab um, at your local grocery store. Or mine sells it anyway. Uh, confiture, is it called, Jody? Unfortunately, I've cut off the bit that tells me what it's called. But this actually is a mixture of, of milk and soy. Oh, no, the dairy can... No, wait a minute. Let me see what it's got in it. Milk, chocolate, sugar, whole milk powder, cocoa butter, unsweetened chocolate, soy, lecithin. That's to stop it. Uh, separating natural vanilla flavor. I want to tell you it tastes great. And I've also obviously used a lot more of the white chocolate. <laughs> now, there are two good reasons to have slabs of chocolate. It's really nice to know that 
you've got chocolate in the house. And the funny thing is you'd think I go to it all the time because, you know, I got a sweet tooth, but I don't. I very rarely go and just cut off a piece of chocolate. And if I do it, you know, it's sort of inclined to crumble. So I don't take very much anyway. Um, but it's a, I love it for doing things like this, whether you want to dip strawberries or whatever. And all I do is I put it in a plastic container. Um, the trick is to just try and show you. Yeah. To do those um, popsicles, I just put some in this container and I filled it about half full. And then just you know, made sure that the popsicles were properly <laughs> frozen. And then I just popped. Uh, oh, the, this, I melted the chocolate one minute at a time. And you actually, I think it took me probably no more than two minutes because uh, it keeps on melting if you keep on stirring it. So I do one minute and I try and stir it. If it's not stirring properly, I put it in for another minute. Uh, and then, you know, you'll find by the end of that, it's, it's stirring up nicely. And <laughs> then you dip it. <laughs> and that does really nice. What have I got there? Okay. It's a berry. Uh, all right. So Sandy's saying, I've done it with the skin on, but I've had trouble taking the skin off afterwards. Uh, have you tried letting it thaw a little bit before you do it? I think it's called confiture. I, I don't know why. Um but I will, next time I get it, I will double check. And uh, I'm certain somebody's going to know and, and leave a comment on it for me. So if you happen to be watching this, hi there. Who have I got there? Maeve. Welcome. I think that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Let me know if that's wrong. Uh, confiture is... is um, Preserved fruit, yes, but it's it's a name like that. <laughs> All right, Jody. <laughs> Hi, Jamie. All right, guys. So, do you want to see what you missed? Hi, Beth. How are you doing? I just done a demonstration of um, how I make these popsicles. So, just so that you know what you missed, and you can watch it on the replay later. All right, so there you see, I knew people would come in. Uh, Mickey, okay. Hi, Mickey. Thank you very much indeed. I can pronounce that. Rinsky says, I always peel my banana before freezing it because the peel is hard to get off frozen. There we go. Ah, of course, Isabel would know because she comes from Quebec. A conf conf confissary. Confissary. Is that how it's pronounced? All right, Beth is busy stocking. Beth, I'm, I'm glad you're okay, honey. I know you've had a tough week. Well, it's good to see you all, I must say. So um, I've got another thing that I wanted to demonstrate for you. If you like these little demonstrations, because uh, I did another experiment this week. Hmm. Because I am trying, oh, first of all, before I, I, do, I do the other experiment, let me just tell you what, um, sorry, I just need to get my notes here because I wanted to give you the, the difference in those two, you know, the difference between the popsicle that I have been eating and the ones that I have now started to make. And it is actually quite surprising. Let's try it on. As we get to that, by the way, did you know that today is National Cousins Day? If you've got a cousin, <laughs> wish them Happy Cousins Day. And also, did you know that it is huh, National, it, it's actually Amelia Hart Day. For those of you who don't know, she was the uh, pilot who Flew, tried to fly around the world and, and was lost about three quarters of the way around. And we, nobody really knows what happened to her. They think she died on an island in the South Pacific. Um, but it's her birthday today, or would have been. 
And also, I wanted to say that um, we just want to give some thoughts and prayers to Beth, who's been sick, to Erin, who's been sick, um, to Bernice, whose father uh, not only is in stage four cancer, but then got COVID as well. So you imagine what it's like for her that she has all that going on and she cannot get back to see him. So that is really, really sad and must be very difficult for Bernice. Um, and for those of you who watch the scan, uh, the, the, the thread, she normally comes in under Sakura, just so you make sure you got the same person. Lionel and Jody have had a really tough week, by the way. And, you know, one of the things about having this wonderful extended family is we get a lot of things going on for a lot of people. And isn't it amazing how some weeks are just so much more difficult than others? But um, Jody and Lionel, Lionel hurt his back. And as you know, Lionel is the main support system for Jody, who... Um, is suffering health-wise, but never stops her from helping us for some reason. And so, you know, that must have been so scary for um, Jody. But as far as I know, uh, he's getting on the men, but his sciatic nerve has been really badly inflamed. Um, I, yeah, Jamie is giving us an update, and I saw that this morning that uh, California just surpassed New York with the most cases of COVID. And, you know, wasn't that sad? They had that so beautifully under control until they started opening up and people went to the beaches. It, it, it's really, really, really sad because California was doing such a good job. Uh, by the way, this week, uh, I am not sure because I haven't heard from Erin. If any of you have, I knew she was due to go in for a scan this week. But she also wasn't very well, so I'm not sure whether that's what she's going to be doing. Um, so if anybody's heard from her, let me know. And then Amel will get her exam results this week. <laughs> and as you know, Amel is from Tunis, uh, in Tunisia. So, you know, that's um, – I love the international component. And talking about the international component, happy birthday tomorrow – to Linda, for those of you who know Linda from the UK, it's her birthday tomorrow. So that's our uh, sort of uh, catch up on that. By the way, for those of you who are JLo fans, uh, I believe it's her birthday today as well. So we love that. Don't forget, if you're watching and you're new, to subscribe if you haven't already. And please, uh, on the bell thing, just click on that. And it's going to ask you, do you want all the notifications? I would really recommend that the answer is yes, because what will happen is you will then get any notifications if we do an extra broadcast or something like that. And so Dear Mama Sal is all about helping people cope. So do any of you have any coping issues this week? If so, let's start talking about them. And if any of you have a subject or something you'd like to see me try and demonstrate, <laughs> as you know, my demonstrations are all about doing it in real time so that you can see how, really how simple it is. It's not all orchestrated beautifully with all the right lighting and everything going in the right direction. I'm a great believer if you can see it done live. <laughs> you know, and I drop stuff on my countertop or whatever. I think it, it, just helps you see whether it's easy or not. And I could be wrong on that. Let me know whether you like those little cooking things or not. Uh, if you have any subjects that you'd like me to, to talk about or to demonstrate, um, how about writing to me at dearmamasal at gmail.com. Bernice, uh, any news on your daddy? And welcome, by the way, Bernice. Good to see you. So part of the reason I did this experiment, and by the way, life is for me is a series of experiments. Um, part of the reason I did it, as you know, is I'm trying to find healthier swaps. My diet plan is, I don't want to diet, I want to change the way in which I eat. Now, I've spent a year uh, doing a pretty good job, but I've noticed since the pandemic, um, it has really, my blood sugar has gone up slightly, and I'm having difficulty uh, getting it under control. 
And for some reason, my blood sugar is really doing a number at night. It obviously has to do with what I eat late at night. Um, but, you know, it's really weird. I can have very low blood sugar all day long. And then <laughs> I go to bed and I wake up in the morning and it's right up there. So, well, right up there for me is, is you know, borderline diabetic. Uh, I'm pre-diabetic. So what I realize I've got to do is make little changes and uh, and not have that spike going on. And one of the things that I knew was probably not helping was the, uh, yeah, the fact that I was eating popsicles. And then I went, I've got to learn to make tasty popsicles that I can enjoy and not feel I'm being deprived. So I did that. The difference actually is staggering. And let me just give you the difference here. Um, to me, it was staggering anyway. And Jody very kindly did the math on it. What we found out was those popsicles that I made, um, without the chocolate, ended up being, I think you said, 44 uh, calories, Jody. And with the chocolate, I did the math, with the chocolate, it ended up being 71 calories. So what I wanted to say was, how does that compare with the super frosty that I normally have? Well, this is the difference. That super frosty, as much as I love it, uh, oops. All right, let me just do this here. Was 170 calories. All right. So I've managed to more than half the calories in making my own. And by the way, they're bigger, they last longer, and they are tastier. I've got to say that. Even without the chocolate, I was quite surprised when I, you know, crunched through the chocolate. The chocolate just broke anyway. <laughs> and so I thought, well, that was fun just to be able to show you that it's easy to do. But it's like I could very easily just have them without the chocolate. So that's interesting. And the carbs on one of those ones that I used to eat, 19 grams, and remember, and the carbs on... The homemade one, Jody worked it out at 8.1. So how many of you can see that that's a good swap, right? Why? Number one, it's far less calories. Number two, far less sugar. Number three, it uses up fruit that, you know, otherwise is going to go you know, bad on me. And... So I'm looking at it and going, all winter, I don't know what am I talking about, it's summer here. <laughs> it's only winter for Lauren, right? And those of you south of the equator. Uh, oh, and if um, Niasha's sort of between, because she's sitting just about on the equator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep buying the same amounts of fruit. And what I'm going to do is to keep... Uh, Freezing it so that I, I'm going to freeze it so that I have it for the winter. Also, I'm trying to show you something. What am I trying to show you? Don't you hate that? I'll probably remember in a minute. <laughs> I've got to stop thinking and walking at the same time. Um, but the good news is that I, I, I now find a way where I don't have to waste fruit. Uh, and I'm just freezing it in little pucks because then I can make, a, as I said, a slushy out of it. I can make a, a smoothie with a puck or I can just have a puck on its own. Now, here's another thing that I like the idea of. You know, you can literally have one puck of that and then on top of that have a different one. So, you know, it's like I'm going to be doing a lot of experiments. You'll be pleased to hear about that. So what I'm going to be doing is doing a lot of different 
little demonstrations of swaps. You know, this is what I have been eating. This is what I'm going to be eating. And it, quite honestly, if it doesn't taste good, I'm not interested. You know, because to me, if it doesn't satisfy my taste buds, I know I won't keep making them. The other thing was, how long did that take me to make? You know, minutes, less than five minutes. And that's while I was talking. You know, so it's not a big deal. And I want to tell you, it definitely is something, if I had children or grandchildren, I'd definitely be making them. All right, Sandy's been saying, I've been having chia puddings in the morning instead of just coffee. Yes, it's so good because my blood sugar stays stable. All right, now, uh, where have I got it here? Somewhere? No. Uh, Sandy, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Oh, I knew what I came out the fridge for now. Thank you, Sandy. Um, Sandy, I've been mixing my oatmeal with chia and cooking the two together. And now, um, so now instead of just oatmeal, it is 50-50 oatmeal and chia, and it tastes so good. And by the way, you put some fruit on there, like some raspberries. Awesome. Here's another trick. If you are buying vegetables and fruit, have you noticed what I do here? I put them in a mason jar, and then I keep one toilet roll in the kitchen because this is how I use it. I put a piece of toilet roll over the top, and then I close the lid. This allows the fruit to breathe, and it lasts a lot longer. These cherries are well over a week, I think. So I thought I'd show you that. It also works really well for when you're cutting up vegetables as well. All right, now then, I want you to show you one more thing. We talked about this a little bit last week in a different way. So let me get everything set up while I do this. And by the way, once I move the camera, uh, angle. I won't be able to see the comments for a while. So, Jody, if anybody's asking me questions, just can remind them that I'll come back and answer the question. Uh, I want to get a bowl. I've been playing with, and boy, did I get the right combination. I was really quite surprised. Maybe that. And... Um, Okay, something on which to Here we go. Now, this is something that I was playing with yesterday, and what I was trying to do was to make little amounts of shredded vegetables that were crispy and therefore, you know, good to eat, but tasty. Uh, and it really was much more simple than I thought and much tastier than I thought. So let's just do this. Going to move the camera now, so Jody, just let people know if they're trying to ask you stuff. Okay, so the first thing I've got is a bowl of water because we're going to put the vegetables in there, and I'm going to get the lemon juice back again. There we go. 
Uh, I keep chopped up onion in the fridge. I also have it in the freezer like this. So I'm just going to put some chopped up onion in there. And it doesn't really matter how you do it. Just remember onion, you know, takes the longest to cook. So therefore keep the pieces of onion pretty small. That's my only thing I would say, but it definitely gives it great taste. Now, you've all got your own way of doing that. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm just really cutting up any bits that are a bit bigger knowing that it's going to take longer to cook. There we go. Okay, so there we go. So the first thing I've got in there is some onion. Now, I could use a mandolin to do this, and I've got one um, just so that you know. I've got one that not only, <laughs> um, you know, it has the ability to, to cut very fine stuff. So, for example... You know, it will shred like that. But say you haven't got one of those. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed how much you can do with a potato peeler. And also be aware that most potato peelers, if they look like this one, go both ways. Did you know that? Much quicker. Quicker than a mandolin, quite honestly. And then some of you may have one of these, which I showed you last week, which does a great job. I don't think this goes both. Oh, yeah, it does. Well, look at that. And the trick is when you're doing this, keep the shredded bits of vegetable fairly, you know, you don't want them too long. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, and then I've got some zucchini here. Quite honestly, that is easier to do this way. And I leave the skin on because it gives it more color. Okay, so let's put those there. And then all I do is add in any herbs. These, this is some rosemary from my garden that I dried. So put some rosemary in there. I found that worked really well. Mm, smells so good already. And I don't know how you do this, but what I like to do is to leave the vegetables soaking for a little while just to get the starches out of it, you see. Uh, I'll rinse it a couple of times, and then I'll show you the next bit. Just rinse that off. Hello again. Let me just see if there are any comments here. Does the onion make the fridge or freezer smell with that container? No. When I used disposable bags, it made the freezer smell. These ones that I got, uh, I love them because I can put them in the dishwasher, but I, I haven't found that my fridge smelled. No. Um, yes, Jody's saying that's a heavy plastic reusable bag. Yeah, it's from Amazon. And Jody, if you will remind me, I'll put up a link. I actually... I think if you're a wish person, I think you could also get them on wish, but I will definitely put up a link for those people who want them. Um, I keep all sorts of things in them, small amounts of stuff, and it's great. You know, it's nice for a serving size of stuff. <laughs> Niasha's lovely. Hi, Niasha. Good to see you. Um, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm making little crispy vegetable bundles because, you know, I don't think most of us really necessarily enjoy 
some of the root vegetables. Am I correct on that? But, you know, what I found is if you mix it up, you know, for example, I've got um, <laughs> is this a yam, <laughs> a sweet potato, something like that. I normally get the, the red one of this uh, or the orangey one. Uh, but, you know, when you mix it all up and make it tasty, it really is quite the difference. I'm going to the sink, which I cannot see. So I need to. Okay. Uh, I will be. So all I'm going to do is just rinse it one more time. Because what I want is to get... Let's put the curd and the starch out before I do the next bit. Okay, I'm going to let that drain for a little while. Uh, and that's while we put these things away. Sort this out, but again, if you do a little bit of meal prep like this, it's amazing how much time it saves you. And Yasha, what I'm making is some of these, and they are just so nice. They're little vegetable snacks. Mm. Crunchy. Tasty <laughs> and cold. So, again, I'm looking for treats that will satisfy me. Uh, Nyasha, I just showed you, so you'll see it on the replay. Okay, I'm just making them now, actually, so just bear with me. And now, <laughs> okay, guys, hang on. Uh, we're just doing that. So, first of all, shred. And I, on this one that I'm making, you can put in whatever you like. So, I put in onion, carrot, zucchini. Um, you know, you can put in celery. You can put in anything you like. But the main thing is, is to get in the vegetables that you know you need to eat but don't normally eat. So now, it's amazing actually how much liquid they absorb. So I'm just going to let that drain a little bit more and get out my... Now, the good news is that these are great, from my experience... These are great if you are doing a summer barbecue. Um, they're great to, you know, put one the barbecue mat that I showed you. Hang on, let me just show you again in case somebody hasn't got one. You know, put one of these on your barbecue, and they are great to, to do these on a barbecue. So I'm just pulling out my crepe maker, which you know I use for a thousand and one things. And let me just get it plugged in, people. And I need to make a little bit of space here. And that can be warming up. Now you can, if you haven't got a barbecue, if you haven't got anything else, you can also do these on a frying pan. So it's up to you what you do them in. You know, I'm a very great believer in making life easy, not difficult. So this is, I'm just meal prepping my vegetables for the next few days by doing this. Okay, so I've put on my, all right, let me read some comments here. Oh, I can enhance the taste of carrots for you without any problem at all. 
Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, once you have got the, the vegetables drained, Now, this next thing is up to you what you put in it, but let me tell you, uh, I'm going to put the camera down so Jody again, I won't be able to see the comments. If anybody's asking me anything, just ask them to hold on until I can get back. All right, so here's what I do in mine. First and most importantly is some olive oil because that's where you're going to get the crispy from. Then, obviously, put in, I've already put in some rosemary here, which works really well. I'm going to put in quite a bit of black, uh, actually, this is multiple peppers in here. So whatever seasoning you like, put in. Because remember, what we're looking for is taste. We're not looking for um, brilliance. Now, this I found worked really well. I put in some balsamic vinaigrette or vinaigrette, depending which country you're in. And I find that gave it a mm, really nice kick. And then I just mixed it up. That. Now, there are different ways of cooking this. honestly, uh, and it doesn't really matter which way you do it. Right, here we go. Now, one of the ways is to, I'm just looking for something here. Yeah. Um, this is what I did yesterday, is I put some, you know, some of it into a, a silicone cupcake holder, you know, really piled it up into one of those, and then cooked it for about half an hour like that at a pretty high heat. I think I did it about 375 heat. And then after half an hour, I turned them over because this side was all crunchy, and I turned them over and I just grilled the top of the other side. And I want to tell you, really worked well. Now here, I have got, and it, the other thing is, if you use your silicone, it's a very nice measure. Didn't see that. Okay. <laughs> So if you if you haven't got um, you know, it doesn't really matter which method you use, does it? It's up to you. The main thing is is to get the vegetables in a format that's interesting to eat. This is going to be a nice onion one. Okay. And I'm going Nobody minds eating it. And I've done this often with the barbecue and been quite surprised at how many people came back for second. Because they, they didn't expect it to be that tasty. We want to make sure that the vegetables are cooked. <laughs> she says eating the raw. Uh, wait a minute. So I'm just going to put the lid on. And this is just a separate lid. It doesn't come with the... Uh... Okay. All 
Oh, now for those of you who want to know how to make carrots tasty, um, Nyasha, let me talk to you. There are two different ways, just while that's cooking. Uh, Sakura's asking, can you just bake this uh, crispy in an oven? Yes, use muffin tins. Just put little individual amounts in muffin tins is how I do it in the oven, and you can do it that way, okay? I can do, I do my, I, my muffin tin fits in my toaster oven, I do it in my toaster oven. So on a barbecue, any way you like. Sakura, um, I would really recommend, you've also got blood sugar issues, so... Uh, if I remember correctly. So definitely add some butter and maybe a little bit of stevia. Do you, do you get uh, stevia or, you know, some sort of sweetener substitute? Oh, ML, I'm sorry to hear that. Were you close? Uh, I was asking Amel about her, her exams. All right, so uh, the other thing is, if you don't have uh, too much of it, I really love to put just a drizzle of um, maple syrup on carrots. There we are. Hi, Samantha. Good to see you. So Samantha's saying, is your mom here too? Didn't see the name, but maybe while I was busy doing stuff. So Samantha's saying Mrs. Dash is her favorite way to make carrots tasty. There you go. Good to see you. So quite honestly, uh, I think, I know I'm Canadian, um, but with arthritis, hold on a second. But I really do believe that just a drizzle of so what have I got in here? I put a little bit of, you can put any salad dressing on it, right? So I'm just going to try and open this up. <laughs> oh, wrong way. Yeah. Smart. So this is just, just, I didn't do the ones yesterday with maple syrup, but, but now I'm just going to put a drizzle of maple syrup on each. Oops, a big drizzle. Yep. And that will give it another taste again. By the way, I would really recommend uh, maybe some lemon juice or some lime juice if you haven't got all the other flavors in there. That makes it, you know, you can keep mixing it up, whatever you want to do. The main thing that I'm trying to show you is let's, let's eat more vegetables, all right? So, and as you saw, once you cook them, that was just a nice little snack that I took, all right? It's just a handful size that you can pick up and take a snack of, of, of healthy stuff. And that's what I'm trying to do. If you'd like to see what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, Jody, I'm off camera, so I can't read the notes. Now, this is already beginning to cook quite well. And the reason I know that is because I can see that it's beginning to, you know, Break down a bit. Okay. 
that we're going to keep cooking until the onions are done. And I'm going to let that cook a little bit more and then I'm going to turn them over. Sure. Let's see what else we've got here. No, the lid is separate. <laughs> I bought this lid separately. Um, and, uh, I will look to see if I can find the link to the lid. I, I want to tell you, I got so fed up of having lids where I couldn't see what was going on underneath. I don't know if any of you have that problem. I want to see, you know, I want to see what's cooking and how well it's cooking. When you put a regular lid on, you can't see anything. And that used to drive me insane. So I, and, and this one is sort of graded so it'll fit different size uh, pots and things. So it's just a personal thing. Nice comment. Thank you for mentioning that. Uh, they look like veggie burgers. Okay. So we've had it cooking for not, how long would you say? For five minutes already? Not too long. Maybe a bit more. But now I'm going to turn them over. I'm going to try and turn them over. <laughs> now, obviously, if they are in a silicone uh, cupcake thing, this is a lot easier. But I just wanted to show you that you could do it on a barbecue. Look at that. Yeah. So the, the maple syrup will help it caramelize. You see that caramelization there? So that's really easy. By the way, when I've done this, um, you know, for a barbecue, I, I, I literally have been surprised how many people went. I would never have thought to cook vegetables for a barbecue like that. But, you know, the fact that it's crispy and tasty and, you know, it goes really well. I, I normally do big stacks, probably twice this size if I'm doing a barbecue. Okay, there we go. Yes, now, whoever it was um, that said about they look like veggie burgers, um, you absolutely could use them and put, uh, you know, really crisp them up and then put a burger on top of them. That would also work really well. Romeo. Okay. So let me just see what the comments are, if any. <laughs> okay, Sandy. <laughs> All right. So there we go. So we're just going to let it cook a little bit more. It doesn't need a whole lot. We we want the vegetables cooked, but not overcooked. All right. So I don't know about you. I like my vegetables still a little crunchy. And then what I love about doing this, and by the way, you can do it in, the, in an oven. Um, and just, you know, make sure that the vegetables are cooked. And if necessary, um, just uh, put the uh, broiler on just to crisp up the tops. So not difficult to do. <laughs> you get it all over your phone. <laughs> and how many of you know I haven't had my coffee yet? Mm. So I again think if you've got anybody that you want to get more vegetables into their diet, uh, make the vegetables tasty. Yes, Niash is saying, if there's no maple syrup, what can I use as a, a substitute? Honey? Um, all right, so what made it, what made it, okay, um, interesting. Let me just read what Niash just said so I can, I, I can show you. Niash is saying, there's no ma if there's no ma maple syrup, what can be used to substitute? I like that caramel color. I definitely eat it that way. 
it looks like my aunt's cooking, but I never get it that way. Okay, so the first thing is I've got a fairly hot surface. Now, whether that's a fry pan or whatever, have it fairly hot. Now, the joke is that with this particular thing, I only have it on one and a half. <laughs> but uh, plus, you know, put a bit of oil on first, or if you, you know, want to put butter on first, put butter on first. So now what I'm doing is you're getting the crispiness, Niasha, from it hitting, the oil hitting the surface, all right? And the caramelization comes from the sugar content. So even if you just use balsamic vinegar, look at that, oh, it looks so good, um, you'll find that it will crisp up and get that color, Niasha. It's not necessary to have the maple syrup. I just added it because you know, I was showing you the different sort of things you can do to make it tasty. Uh, the addition of rosemary, I found, really helped the taste of vegetables. Yeah, because rosemary has a very distinct taste. So that definitely comes through when you eat it. It's quite a bite to it. So what do you think, everybody? Look good? And I sort of work on the principle that two of these would make uh, a serving. So let's put two on a plate. And we'll put two on another plate uh, on a, in a container so I can put it away. Now, the reason... The reason that I like to cook on here, as some of you know, is because now that that's cooked, I'm going to turn it off. And the first thing I'm going to do is to get most of the grunge off it with a wet cloth. And, you know, if you do it fairly quickly, uh, most of it comes right off. Even the sugar stuff comes right off. Okay, that's the first thing. Now, you can see there's still bits there that are there. So all I do is I will rinse out the top. Now that's a pretty wet cloth. And now we're just going to steam those other bits. Okay. While we're cooking. That's quite a lot of stuff on my countertop here. Yeah? <laughs> I'm not the cleanest cook, apparently. Oh. That was oily fingers. Yeah, it does look awesome, but... Here is the thing. Was it simple enough to do? How many of you going? That was pretty simple. And mm. Here, vegetables just just enough um, cooking to make them soft, but still have some crunch in them. Oh. <laughs> Sandy's got a comment saying, mm. note to self, <laughs> eat before watching sales skills broadcast. Well, how many of you know I'm enjoying this? And I don't. I'm telling you, I'm not a huge fan of vegetables, but I've learned that this works pretty well. Mm. 
Mm. I think there's a difference between eating and inhaling. Mm. Now, what I've done is, you know, I've already got some in the fridge. Uh, I, these are just pre-prepped, ready for later in the week or at the weekend. Because what I will do, I already know that they're cooked. Um, and I will just warm them up again on here before I use them. Actually, I've got Yvonne coming tomorrow, so I'll warm up some for her. I know she loves them. Okay, so I'm just moving a little bit more of this stuff off the grill or the crepe maker, as it so happens to be, that I happen to use as a grill. Hmm. Boy, tell you something. I might just eat the other bit. <laughs> and I just wanted to show you, um, here is the grill, okay, and before I put it away, obviously I'm going to let it cool down, but before I put it away, I also just put a little bit more olive oil on it, and... Just let it soak in. This is just what I do. I'm not saying it's the right way or anything, but just so that it's nice and seasoned, ready for the next time. All right, so how do you think, or what do you think about that? Is that easy enough for you all? <clears throat> you remember not to try and move the camera with oily hands like I did last time. <laughs> it's inclined to be a little bit slippery. Okay, so Nyash was saying, vegetables for me would never be the same again. There's something about it being shredded that makes it so much uh, more enjoyable. I didn't take my allergy pill. <laughs> well, thank you, Sharon. My cooking is definitely uh, entertainment. Yes, comedic entertainment. Um. So you see, the thing is that what, what we keep trying to say is life isn't about what you can't do or what you don't want to do. It's what can you do, you know, what can I do to help myself eat more vegetables? And can I batch cook um, so that I can, you know, I actually cook about twice a week. Okay, hang on a second. Sharon, Sharon, what did you do with my... Okay, there it is. Okay, I've got to go back and read something. Sharon says, considering I see your brain trying to figure out how to lick plate <laughs> and not get caught. <laughs> Actually, Sharon, my big challenge at the moment, the, these are here. And you know I, I want to eat them. <laughs> That's how good they are. <laughs> yeah, so you, and, but really there's something about adding, I, I would recommend all sorts of different um, additives, like maybe the vinaigrette with raspberry, you know, that would be really good on there. How about doing them with uh, a soy sauce and olive oil mix? 
you understand each time <laughs> each time that you change them up, they're going to be totally different taste. Now, can I freeze these like this um, and, and just literally bring them out when I want them? They're vegetables, so can't you have as much as you want? Well, it's got a little bit more than just vegetables, right? It's got, yeah, Italian dressing would be awesome, Sandy, um, if you can, you know, if you can have garlic, which, of course, I can't because I'm allergic. So what I'm saying is think about putting little additives in. By the way, could you do it in a casserole dish? Um, you know, if you've got company coming, could you do a whole lot of it and just put it in a casserole dish? Sure. You know, make it, I bet you that, that, that there won't be anything left on that casserole dish uh, once they've had a bite. Yes, you're saying veggies are something I don't include in my diet, but my health demands that I do. There's been a constant struggle between me and various challenges, and oftentimes they would win. So I'll thank you. It's a pleasure. You see, I need to eat more vegetables as well. Now, for those of you who like spaghetti squash, you can do it with spaghetti squash. But those, you know, so it doesn't really matter. Pumpkin, you know, it's like find vegetables that you like. The, the old, old story, right, is don't eat what you don't like. Eat what you do like. And I think that is what makes the difference when you're eating stuff that you do enjoy. So really, all we've got in here uh, is some vegetables, some oil, and vinegar, balsamic vinegar, uh, because I think that gives it the bite that I enjoy so much, the taste. And then I put a bit of rosemary in there. And on this lot, I did put a little drizzle of um, maple syrup, which is probably why I'm inhaling it. <laughs> but, you know, it's fun. All right. Yes, Bernice is saying, you know, this is what I do. If I don't like eating vegetables, I ask myself, what do I need to do to make it enjoyable? Because I need to eat vegetables. End of story. Right? Um, for example, I know that eating avocado is a healthy oil. All right. And so I buy them every week, but I notice that they, you know, I've got right. There, <laughs> I've got two avocados and I've got another three in the fridge. Uh-oh. Oops. So this is all about what am I going to do with the avocados? I'm going to add them to smoothies this weekend. <laughs> Sandy, all right, so Sandy saying that the crepe griddle is on sale at Amazon. I'm using your link to order one. Okay, thank you so much. Um, but, you know, it's like, and we will put the link up uh, for the thing. The thing is that I love experiments, as you know, all right? So to me, I'm always trying to find out what else can I do. The fact that this is meant to be a crepe maker, you know, to me is just the start, you know, <laughs> what else can it do? By the way, how many of you would like to see me make um, wraps with it? Because I did that this week as well. Now, isn't that interesting? Sakura is now telling me, and Jody was telling me earlier, thanks, Sakura. Uh, Bernice is saying you can puree the avocados and add milk and stevia and make ice cream. That is definitely something I'm going to be doing. So the interesting thing was that I thought, I wonder if I can make crepes out of them, you know, with, with this thing. I, why, you know, I couldn't think that I couldn't. You know, if I can make, you know, you know I've made crepes. Um, sorry, I've made crepes, but can I make wraps? That's what I was trying to say. And so what I did, uh, I've constantly got 
Uh, the base for my bread in my kitchen, as you know, all right, this is the base for, tomorrow, for tomorrow's bread. And all I did was I took some of this, you know, which is pretty runny. Um, but anyway, I, I, what I thought I'd do, if you'd like me to, I'll, I'll show you how I did it. But I have had crepes a couple of times, this, not crepes, wraps, uh, twice this week. What I did was I made the wraps, and then I put a little bit of um, cream cheese and very finely sliced cucumber, more cucumber is what I was going for. Um, anyway, so... But I will show you that another day. <laughs> now then, if you happen to be... Uh, I'm just trying to think. Jeannie sent me some... Jeannie sent me a little bottle of blueberry syrup. So how many of you can imagine a little bit of blueberry syrup over the vegetables would taste awesome? All right, so Sandy's saying the last time I checked it was $80. Now it's down to $44. I want to tell you, you will not regret it. <laughs> uh, okay. The way to make onions that don't smell. I quite honestly, onions are going to smell and you either love the smell of cooking onions or you don't. Uh, I, again, what I would recommend, Bernice, is if you don't like the smell of cooking onions, only cook them once. Oh, in the fridge. Okay, you just need, you just need better quality bags or put them inside a mason jar. And, and tighten up that lid. The, the smell will not get into the um, into the fridge. All right. Yeah. Fill a mason jar up with sliced onion. This will take a full onion. Slice it up. Put the lid on tightly and put it in the fridge. And then you can just stack them up. Okay. So you you you're good to go. Try it. I'm still watching these, Sharon. <laughs> I think they're going to win. Um, <laughs> you're the so good. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? And if you're having a barbecue, get one of those mats and definitely do it on the barbecue. Oh. I guess you can hear the crunch, right? Where's the crunch coming from, sir? <laughs> now, olive oil is not too bad for you, I think. Uh -huh. The... Definitely the maple syrup help. Even more. Okay. Now I don't have to look at it anymore. Hmm. A little bit of rosemary. Uh, by the way, if you buy rosemary from the store, um, just wrap it in paper towel and leave it in the fridge uh, for about a week and it will dry on its own. And okay, so Bernice is saying so onion, carrot, zucchini, rosemary, yam, anything you like. You could put potato in there, regular potato, olive oil, and seasonings of your choice. And you don't even have to put the sugar in. Uh, the ones I did yesterday didn't have any sugar in. Uh, pleasure, Niasha. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Hope you enjoy your vegetables this week. So what I wanted to talk to you about is 
think about making healthier swaps. How many of you know that the popsicle is a healthier swap from the ones that I was eating? And now, you know, the vegetables is a healthy addition. Okay, so Bernice is saying, thanks, Mama Sal, but I would love to try what you just did. Yep, it was very, very tasty. <laughs> yeah, you got that. <laughs> so, by the way, if you are new and watching the full broadcast, um, <laughs> um, remember to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We put up a half-hour warning of the broadcast on Facebook and Twitter, just so that you know. And also, we use Facebook to uh, let people know uh, information about people, you know, if somebody's sick or we need thoughts and prayers for somebody. And thank you all for the thoughts and prayers this week. We had quite... Hi, Nada. Uh, yes, so Jody and Sandy, if you would like to do that research to find us a lower glycemic maple syrup, um, you know, that would be a really good, nice idea. By the way, I've also been playing, for those of you who understand this sort of stuff, this I did, um, I mushed up ginger and mint. And just dried it. Got quite a kick to it as well. Okay, so Jody. Let's not do it now. Let's do it later, but let's put it on our list of things. Okay. All right. So all I'm saying to you is, you know, I constantly say to myself, you know, if this isn't working for you, what are you going to change? Right? Right. And you see, I think the whole thing is that if you cook something like that, you understand that is enough for two days. I, I did enough, and I didn't do big, big amounts. I just, I could have done the whole of the grill solid with vegetables and pre-cooked my vegetables like that and put them in mason jars and just pulled them out during the week when I wanted them. But what do I know? They're really tasty to eat on their own. And they also are, you know, really good to, can you imagine that, or, or, you know, just as I said, a, a base for a burger, for example. So to me, it's finding better ways. And I am in the process of finding better ways. I haven't got it right yet. Yeah, and, and you know, that's what Bernice is saying. We've been eating healthier foods, but this adds more variety. Um, one thing I always remember that Benji said to me, which is the more color you've got in your food, the better it is for you. So you understand all the different colors there, right? You could I could have added eggplant, plant, um, or plant, depending which country you're in. You know, I could have added any of the vegetables. But if you're saying I don't like root vegetables, then add other things to them that you do like. You know, if you so if you don't like celery. Just add a little celery in there because you know it's good for you. So I look at it and go, all these things are possible. Banana chips, Nada saying, are a good snack. Yes. Now, the only problem is I can inhale banana chips, and they have quite a high, I think I'm right on that, they have quite a high glycemic index thing, which means for those of us who are pre-diabetic or diabetic, um, bananas are not the best, which is why, if you noticed, when I made the popsicles, I put half banana, half grape, and then the other half of the popsicle was um, grapes and, oh, and, and yogurt, right? So I limited the amount of banana, but I did use it because it's a really nice flavor. I, I love the flavor of banana in a popsicle. Okay, so this is, we're getting there. And, you know, it's actually fun for me to experiment and see what works, because if it works for me, it might work for you guys. That's how I look at it. In terms of be prepared and not scared, I do 
want to just say to you that I'm pretty sure you all know that the pandemic is getting worse, not better. And because it's getting worse, be prepared for that, all right? It's going to get a lot worse before it starts getting better. If you thought it was going to be over by the fall, no. Um, we'll be lucky if it's over by next fall, quite honestly. So therefore, um, plan around this. And I want you really not to be scared, but be prepared. Um, however, what I need you to know is the longer the pandemic continues, the greater effect it's going to have on the economy. And you all know that um, they want to open the economies up so that people can get back to work and, and get the economy going again. And they want to open everything up so that the economy will get back up. But, you know, uh, I don't know how you guys feel, but you know, at what cost? At what human cost? Do you want me to die so that you can earn money? You know, that's really... This is what you, do you want your child to die so that, you know, somebody next door can earn some money? Uh, you know, it's going to be a very difficult choice for people. And it's going to happen. So here's the thing we can do. We can know that things are going to get tough. Uh, and now it's definitely going to get very tough economically. So jobs that you thought you might be going back to, you may not be. Because the economy isn't there to support it. So here's, again, what I say to you. Please make sure that you are stocking up. All right? Stocking up every time you buy groceries. Again, I say to you, make sure you've got the staples. In other words, when you buy flour, buy as big a bag of flour that you can. You're not going to be sorry for that. And learn how to make your own bread. Uh, learn how to make your own wraps. You will be grateful for it later. And, you know, I'm looking at it, you know, I buy a big bag of rice, right? Rice will last for the longest time. Uh, buy as tinned vegetables. Buy tinned milk. You're going, I hate tinned milk. Yes, but I got news for you. If you haven't got cream and you need something on top of some, yeah, tin milk works really well. All right. So you'll be grateful for it in another way. So please, please um, do what you can to stock up where you can. And quite honestly, buy the vegetables you enjoy. All right. So if you don't like beans, don't buy them. But if you like baked beans with maple sauce, Canadian, um, <laughs> you know, buy some. That's good protein, right? But, you know, have them and keep restocking your pantry. I now have, I think, enough flour to last me. I'm doing an experiment at the moment. Let me just have a look here. Hang on a second, people. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this flour I opened in May. It's 25, did we say 25 pounds? Jody, is that what we said? 10 kilos was 25 pounds? Anyway, so this was a big bag. And I've used this much since May, making bread and stuff like that. So we got May. So... This bag will last me another month, at least, maybe two. So you understand, I now know that I probably need three of those to have enough flour for a year. That's what I'm trying to work out. So all the time, I would like to have that much flour in the house because you can do without other things, but you can add... You know, little scraps of leftovers to flour and make a, a vegetable crepe, a vegetable wrap, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? And so learn how to make, I, I don't know, have you ever made your own cheese, people? 
Have anybody ever done that? Made your own mozzarella cheese. And if any of you would like me to try that one, I'd, I'd be quite interested to try it. Because <laughs> you know that. <laughs> you may like, really? I can make my own cheese? Um, so the whole thing about we will, con th this whole pandemic is we will continue to travel this journey together as long as God is, you know, happy for us to do that. Uh, so what I'm going to keep doing is reminding you and to be prepared, not scared. If you are prepared, now you're saying, Sal, how do I buy extra when I don't have enough money to buy extra? I think the answer would be relook at what you are buying so that you can. And really, that would be my suggestion to you. I don't, you know, if you are on a limited budget, relook at what you're spending your money on. And, you know, if you're buying your favorite uh, name brand, whatever, maybe you go for the generic, whatever the local supermarket produces. Okay. Um, oh, thank you. Jody's saying my 10 kilograms is 22 pounds. Yeah. Um, so I think three of those. Has anybody checked to see how much flour you need? I use quite a bit of flour because I bake bread twice a week. And that's the other thing. It took me quite a while to learn how to bake my own bread. But now that I can bake my own bread, all right, I'm now making my own crepes and other things as well. And, you know, quite honestly, I allow myself one piece of bread a day. So it's all about, can I do it? Yes, I can do it if I want to. Is it easy to learn? Maybe not. But you know, it's all about experiments. And if you quit the first time it doesn't work, who are you? All right? I, I want to tell you, it's taken me a long term, time to learn how to consistently make bread, especially as somebody who doesn't measure. You see, I actually admire Jody who can measure things. <laughs> you know, it's a, for some reason, measuring is not in my DNA. Right. Jody's saying you also know how to make starter. So um, you don't need to rely on yeast. Yes. And not only that, Jody, if you remember, one step on from there as well. I wonder where I put it after it fell. I've even learned how to dry the starter, okay, <laughs> which is now called yeast. Okay? So this is now dried starter that I am collecting. So if I end up with too much starter, I don't throw it away. I dry it. It's summer. I can dry it, right? And I found that drying, uh, if you want to dehydrate something, a temperature of around 150 Fahrenheit to 200 is, you know, will dry it rather than cook it. Yes, um, Bernice is saying failure is just a chance to strengthen your resolve. Or you can just say, I'm not good at this. Well, excuse me, you will never be good at it. How many of you would want to live near me if the brown sticky stuff hits the fan? How many of you want to be near me because I spent a whole season failing at growing most vegetables? And how many of you know by this time next year I will have vegetables because of what I learned this year? especially if I can find the seeds again. <laughs> and if I don't find them soon, I'm going to order that some more up anyway. And the funny thing is, how many of my neighbors are now saying, I think I'm going to start growing as well. So watching you. <laughs> then he says, I would love to be with you just because you're amazing. That's what my neighbor says. 
Well, she sent me the cutest note yesterday. I couldn't believe it. My new neighbor. Um, and I'm going to repeat it only because it fits in with... Let's see if I can find this here. And may I add, you are a godsend in our lives. Isn't that beautiful? Just saying. <laughs> So, you know, it's about, um, I am now doing, you remember I said to you that when I came into the community, there wasn't much uh, going on, and now I you know, was on a mission. Well, guess what? On Wednesday next week, we're having a block party for this part of the community that I live in. All right? And we're going to be socially distant. And you, I've got a front yard that is all graveled. Um, well, it's got lava, lava rock on it that you can stand on easily. And I've got a driveway each side. And, the, you know, <laughs> one is my driveway. One is my neighbor that sent me the nice note. And we're get, we've invited sort of like about 30 people uh, to bring your own chair, bring your own food, bring your own drink. Uh, we are going to have happy hour. <laughs> and we're already planning a, a picnic. So what happened was they kept talking about it but didn't do anything. They kept complaining because things weren't happening but didn't do anything. And I'm going, no, 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 guys, this has to change. If you want to do it, let's do it. So, you know, sometimes you need to stop complaining and just work out, I don't like vegetables. We'll do something different with the vegetables because you know you're going to need to eat them. By the way, if vegetables are the only food available to you, uh, you'd eat them. So what I'm looking at now is ways that we can deal with this pandemic as best we can. So I'm going to keep looking. You know, If you guys want to learn how to make the bread starter, I will happily show you what I do. But, you know, it takes practice to get it right, especially if you, if you don't measure. On the other hand, if you measure, <laughs> there are lots of ways to do it. And, you know, go right ahead. By the way, in terms of Black Lives Matter, Jody, I saw the note, thank you. Um, in terms of Black Lives Matter, I want us to continue to ask our friends who are affected by this, our black friends, we need to ask them, tell me your experiences. I need to know what's happening. You know, and then keep saying it. If you're saying, I don't know, I don't have any black friends, then I ask you, why not? Why don't you have black friends? Do you have Asian friends? Do you have, um, you know, friends from from other parts of a you know you know chinese friends or indo you know I, I i look at it and go if i look at my friends i have friends from just about every culture i can think of and you know why because i want to make sure i understand the cultures always have done and some of you have been surprised you know that i can talk to ml in tunis and and understand something of her culture or the scenery or whatever. You see, if you need to get interested, we need to stop being isolated in our understanding is, is my whole point on this one. So I'm going to keep reminding you to do something about it. Oh, I can't do it because we're in lockdown. Well, if I paid you a million bucks to have a conversation with a black person, uh, could you do it on Zoom? Could you do it some other way? But, you know, if you can tell me that you did it, I know that you are making a difference. You understand what I'm saying? Now then, I would also challenge all men to have a conversation with women. Because if you think <laughs> that, you know, because, you know, I want to tell you, women have more, been more poorly treated than, than the, the black culture. Uh, and we've been poorly treated for millennium. So, you know, this is like, maybe we need to be talking to women as well. All right, so Benny said, I tried making friends with our neighbors, but they ignored me. All right, 
perhaps you could tell them that you, you know, would really love to get to know them better. And so to me, it is up to us to make the difference if you want to. All right, now I've got all sorts of stuff that I still have to talk about. <laughs> so maybe I'll talk about some of it this evening. Uh, which is what I'm going to do. Otherwise, I'm going to just totally run out of time here. Boy, that went quickly, didn't it? Or is it just me? Is it like, really? Is it time for the countdown already? <laughs> I was just getting going. What did I do with the countdown? Oh, it's on the other thing. All right, so. Jody, I want you to take a bow, as usual, because, again, with whatever was going on in your life, and there was a lot, you still put together tonight's broadcast for me. And, you know, we got this teamwork that goes on. Jody sources out the, the funnies for the evening, and I, I just get to interpret them. And, you know, what I find interesting is that it's a double joy for Jody. Number one, she laughs a lot while she's finding the quotes. But then she hears how I inter interpret them, you know, either how I deliver it or the story I have around each of them. And I know that it is my sort of weekly homage, if you like, to Jody, <laughs> because I know how hard she worked to find the quotes. But then I know she's going to laugh when she hears me interpret some of them. So that, that to me is wonderful. And she says it's a pleasure, of course. I actually want to say how grateful I am to the internet gods because just before the broadcast, my internet was going, dropping in and out, and I didn't think I was going to get through a whole broadcast, but we have. It's eight months until Easter, people, uh, which makes it nearly just under seven months until Lent. Valentine's Day is roughly seven months away as well. Um, Christmas is just 153 days away. How many of you remember me saying last week it felt like that Christmas was 200 days away? It's now only 150 days away. <laughs> We're halfway through the year, people. <laughs> Smarten up. Um, that means that we've got four months to get the cards into the mail to go overseas. Um, U.S. Thanksgiving is just four months away, really. And the Canadian Thanksgiving giving is two months and three weeks away because we have ours in October. So that's not very far, is it? I want you all to be aware that we don't know if any of us will be around this time next year. And so what I want you to do is to not panic about that. I want you to be aware of that and learn how to enjoy every day of your life. <laughs> Goodbye here. Um, enjoy every day of your life. Find things to do that make you laugh. Find things, you know, keep learning. One of the things I've always said about Dear Mama Sal, the reason I do three completely different broadcasts is, number one, how many of you enjoy learning something new? You know, even if it's just to give you, how many of you can watch me experiment with something and then you go, oh, I want to try doing something like that? It's not that you want to do what I did, but it triggers your brain to go, you know, I'd like to do that with whatever. And... This is still on, apparently. There we go. Um, I'm going, boy, that's hot around here. And I'm going, yeah, it's still on. So, Duh. And so to me, it's so important to keep learning. Don't say, well, what's the point? Keep learning. And I am trying to learn things that could help me survive in some way. And then remember to keep laughing. The important, if you talk to anybody who went through the war years, all right, and I can remember talking to people who were in London and, you know, each time the air raids came, everybody went into the underground, you know, uh, railway system uh, for protection. But, you know, what made that less stressful 
was the people who could entertain. You know, there were people would play music, people would tell jokes, people would entertain each other, people would bring board games with them and play board games. You know, it's about can you enjoy a stressful situation? And if you can, you're going to survive. And that's what I want the Dear Mama Sal viewers to be able to know. You can survive this. All right? God willing, you know, if you, if, you, if you end up with the virus and I, if I end up with the virus, all right, it is what it is. But until then, I intend to do everything I can to learn how to survive and also to be able to help other people do that. That's important. So I look at it and go, I have lived here for six months and two weeks. I... <laughs> completely tore my craft room apart, having spent two months getting it together. I needed to tear it all apart to be able to get in that big freezer and the new unit. And that was a, a, a story on its own that you will hear this evening. But, you know, it's like, what am I putting in the freezer? Right? The skill is, what am I putting in? I have put rice in there to make it last longer. I thank you, Jody, for that one. I have put uh, flour in there for the same reason. Uh, I have. I am now storing fruit. I'm, you know, getting, making the pucks and then keeping the pucks um, in in a, a, a way that you know makes sense to me. So I've got different shopping bags, and the one will be fruit. The one will be cheese. I'm buying extra cheese. Um, you know, all those sort of things. Plus, I'd like to learn how to make cheese in case I need it. I, you know, how many of you need me to do another broadcast reminding you of the basics that you should have in place? I don't know whether I should keep repeating it or not. Um, but, you know, I haven't got nearly enough and I've been doing pretty well. But, you know, I realize I'm going to need to do a lot more. And so I'm going to be buying less pre-packaged stuff. When I say pre-packaged stuff, if I want crackers, I need to learn how to make them. Do you know what I'm saying? If I keep buying them, I won't learn how to make them. So I want to learn how to make them. So I am going to do that. And if you would like to do that. Okay, so Sakura. Interesting. Hold on one second. Um. <sighs> All right, one of the first things I did, Sakura, when I got my new freezer was I froze this much water in this container. And once it was frozen, I put a coin on top. Okay. Now then, if there is a power failure, I will not be opening my freezer. Even when the power comes back on again, I will not be opening my freezer. Right? But when I do open it up, after it's had a chance to keep, uh, most freezers won't even begin to start losing their effectiveness. I think they say 48 hours. It, the, the thawing will start. All right, there's enough cold in there to hold it for 48 hours. But what I do is I will then have this at the top level of my freezer. And when I open it up, I will want to see how far down here is that coin. Because if it's just a little bit down, it means there was a little bit of freezing, uh, of thawing, but not much. But if that coin is at the bottom, does that make sense? Then I know there's been quite a lot of um, thawing going on. Does that help you, Sakura? So if there's been a power failure, do not open your freezer until about, I would say, at least eight hours after the like um, the the hydro gets, uh, the electricity comes back on again. Okay. You know me. I like to keep you busy.
So what I will do actually is I will probably have three of them, one at the top level uh, and then one me. I've got a little uh, shelf area that's actually quite small um, halfway down. It's probably only about this big and then uh, the, the bottom. And the thing is, what am I going to keep at the top level that if it does thaw, that I'm, I'm going to be prepared to throw away? At the moment, I've got stuff on the top level because it's easier for me to get it. But I'm going to, you know, be, now that it's frozen solid, I'm going to be dropping it down and, and, and building up what's in my freezer. All right, so everybody, the most important thing we can do is to survive, right? <laughs> the reason we are alive today is because our parents survived. And they would want nothing more than for you just to be able to make it. And surviving is going to take as much mental preparation as physical preparation. Jody did a wonderful job of teaching us and her Sandy and everything else. We need to eat better. Why? It will build our immune system. So what is eating better? More vegetables, right? More fruit, more when, while we have them. And that is why I am stockpiling fruit, because if we go into a really bad recession, then I want to make sure I still have fruit. What if we have a major power outage and I lose everything in my freezer? Possible. That means I need enough canned food as well, right? I cannot rely just on the freezer. So I am buying cans of um, pasta with meat in it that has, you know, a pretty long shelf life. I am buying spam. I don't care if you don't like spam. It's like, you know, buy meat in a can, whether it's ham or whatever. Buy pasta so you can have, you know, meat with chopped up ham in it. I mean, you can have pasta with chopped up ham in it. So, you know, this is about get smart. You can do this. And where are you going to store it? Well, hello, start looking at your house as a storeroom as opposed to um, an interior designer's dream. Right? And Bernice is saying, I've been stocking up on canned goods, fruit, meat, vegetables. We like broths. Yes, broth is a very good thing to do. Also, teach yourself how to make your own broth. All right, so buy a whole chicken. If you're used to buying pieces of chicken, I, I want to start showing you that, you know, how long could a chicken last? You know, how many meals could we make out of one chicken? Right? Because I don't buy individual cuts of meat anymore. I buy a roast. So I don't, I buy, actually I do, I buy a turkey breast because that is big, but I might start buying just turkey, right, and cook the whole turkey. Why? Much better bang for your buck. Plus, you get an awful lot of meat off a turkey. How many of you know that after Christmas, it takes a long time to get rid of all the turkey? But, you know, if you cooked one up now, if you've got the room to store it, uh, it's not a bad idea. Some of us may want to learn how to start canning stuff. You know, maybe stock up on mason jars and learn how to can fruits and vegetables or food. Uh, Jody, I think I'd like to try that. So if you could do me a favor and just make a note that uh, that's an experiment that we might want to try. So, everybody, thank you for your time and your effort here. I hope you enjoyed the popsicles, by the way. Guess what I'm going to do now? <laughs> okay, now the first thing is when I bite into this, I'm going to, the, the um, chocolate's going to come off, right? Mm -hmm. Now, mm, it's my treat. Now, this is still pretty rock solid here. Yeah? Mm. Um, what 
what I want to do is just say to you, <laughs> if it's worth making. And how difficult was it? Oh, it's so cool. I got the bite of the raspberry and lemon. Oh, good. We should dear Mama so I'll say, I can have three of these <laughs> and still be under the calories of one of these. How good is that? This is dear Mama Sal, off to go and eat a popsicle. Jody, thank you for everything you do. All of you, thank you for being here. This is dear Mama Sal saying, I had fun. I hope you did too. Bye-bye for now.